and good luck <laughs> because it's too much. I mean the truck. Right, this is going to be a challenge. Eh? <laughs> and be careful to the just to get in. People, huh? Yeah, I'll be very careful. Okay. Well, thank you. Bye bye. Hello, one and all. Welcome to Steam Through Glass and. Well, this is going to be an experience. Uh, earlier this week, the guys from Clausen Cars, who are a relatively new dealership just outside Geneva, got in touch and offered to send me a car to drive to the dealership, because it's about a 20 minute drive. I didn't realise they were going to be sending me an articulated lorry. <laughs> this is, of course, a Ford Raptor, a vehicle you really don't see very often in Europe. and driving it around the narrow streets of Geneva. A little terrifying! <laughs> Hopefully I won't kill any small children and I'll make it to Clausen and I will join you guys there. I'll obviously I'll let you know if I do kill any more children because the video will have to stop there. I didn't mean more children, any children, full stop. <laughs> Well, don't trust what you heard from the bubble, dog. I've been busting out features on a double tree shuttle. Well, the FaceTimes asked me how a brother stays so humble. Well, I just said to ask the driver for some help with the buckle. But anyway, backtrack, I've been doing concerts in the mirror. And I got fam who only get the updates in the earphones and keep on thinking this here could make a full time career. Maybe it won't, but I'll be up in your turn. Well, that was genuinely one of the more terrifying driving experiences I think I've ever had. And I've arrived at Clausen and there's a bloody Huayra here. Just to kick things off, I don't know where to park this bus, but there's a Huayra here and inside I can see a Kuntash and then there's a what looks like a Carrera RS and there's a P1. This place is going to be good, but first I need to park this vehicle without causing too much damage. I did hear a large moo on my way here, so I do worry that I might have knocked down a cow, but it's just impossible to tell when you're driving this thing. You have no idea what's around you. And I said, I'm gonna get a half of the town of Right, the aim of the game here is to try not to get distracted by what's down the line, but to concentrate on the car right in front of us at any one time. I admit it's going to be difficult, but we're going to give it a go. So let's kick things off with this awesome Lamborghini Countach. I think it's the 5000 version. Look at where the pedals are. Look how narrow that pedal box is. And then the actual seat. So you literally sit at that kind of angle. But anyway, super cool to see. Moving along to probably, probably the piece de la resistance on the showroom floor right now. We have got a McLaren P1 GTR. Now, as far as I know, this has been brought up specially from the actual storage facility 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 uh, that I'm going to show you in a little bit uh, of time. Um, so I don't think it's actually for sale. I think it's a car that's usually kept here on storage, but it's absolutely amazing to see. Sort of, I got a bit of a McLaren F1 livery from well, what the Jensen Button Fernando Alonso years. So. Oh, yeah, my knowledge. 2016? I mean, the F1 inspired steering wheel. A bit chunkier than an actual F1 driving wheel, but um, still cool. Oh, look, there's me. Hello. I always enjoy a good reflection. Um, but yeah, that, very, very special. I'm very grateful that the guys brought it up so I could have a quick look. Um, moving on to maybe, well, I'm not going to say my favorite, favorite car of the lineup because that would be really punchy, but we have got a Project 7. And you may know, those of you who've been watching most of the Drive the World videos, that I finally got the chance to get behind the wheel of one of these cars whilst I was in South Africa, a car I have lusted and obsessed over for so many years, ever since my F-Type R ownership. Um, so to have finally experienced one is brilliant. This is the only colour on the Project 7 that I'm not, not a big fan of. Now, who knows what this is? Um, you're all pretty switched on and intelligent, so I imagine most of you do, but for those who might not, this is one of the rarest McLarens ever made, actually rarer than that P1 GTR, because I think it's one of 25 650S Can-Am cars. Now, this is little more than special wheels and a bit of carbon fibre. Um, it's also got a different exhaust setup, um, but it was all to celebrate the old Can-Am heritage of McLaren. And as I say, super, super rare. So I'm actually, I think this is the first one I might have ever seen. Let me show you the iconic exhaust setup that was taken, inspiration was taken from the Can-Am cars, obviously the classic American racing series. 
case. So very cool to see that. We then have uh, MSO McLaren SLR Roadster before moving on to a McLaren P1 looking tiny, tiny in the corner in race mode. Insane to see all the cars in this very nice setting with all the historic posters laying around. But this is just one part of the business, the actual sort of showroom sales part. So let's head around the back and check out the service part. Now I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing in these situations because I'm not really supposed to be filming Porsches. If you haven't been watching the latest videos, Paul Wallace and I made a sort of pact slash bet that I wouldn't film too many Porsches or really any Porsches for the rest of my European leg, otherwise I'd have to sell my Carrera T. So I am gonna slightly skip past that. But I do think I do think this whole bet pack thing is getting a bit ridiculous. So anyway, there you go. I'm gonna take one, two, three, four steps this way because Okay, this is the kind of thing that I should be filming. It's a manual 360 Modena. Oh, this just makes me miss my car so much, which is currently back in the UK, in storage with Windrush. Don't often see silver cars. This one in quite a bit of work, so not looking in its, in its best state. In that corner, that's the paint room um, for the Clausen workshop. We've got a Mini up on the jacks being worked on and an E-Type. And in fact, actually, all the sort of Jaguar work continues because I don't know what that is, but it's an old Jag with an engine out. They do full engine restoration here, so that's having a lot of work done. And then some kind of XK120 Resto Modi type thing. It's got a rake sticker on the back, which I'm pretty sure is that very stylish magazine, isn't it? I'm not a very stylish guy. And then you may have noticed as I spun around, the guys are working on an XJ220, um, but they're back there doing some work on it at the moment, so I can't tell you, show you too much right now, but yes, insane stuff here. Let's move down to the third and final section, the car storage. Now, it's a bit of a sort of guess what's under the cover game down here. Obviously, a lot of these cars are customer cars, so can't be displayed, but check out that SLR MSO McLaren, the colours on that are ridiculous. I can also show you a couple of Clausen race cars which they've uncovered for me. Right here, an LMP3 car in its exposed carbon form. This thing looks so mental. It's, I can't believe it when you get close to these race cars. Just how tiny the cockpits are on these endurance races. Again, as we make our way along, I'm sure you're going to be able to figure out what some of these shapes are, um, but I'm going to skip past to try and keep some kind of privacy or respect some of the privacy of the, the owners and show you the other class and race car, an AMG GT3. This thing is absolutely mad. The presence of it, even though we can only just see the front quarter, it's, I mean, look at that root, it's like a bathtub. It's a bathtub, that bonnet scoop or duct or whatever you might call it, and then you have the rear wing at the back is absolutely mad. I'm not entirely sure how to say this next bit, but okay, so you might have seen the Huayra that was parked outside when I pulled up and well, the owner was in a meeting upstairs. He came downstairs and saw me and apparently he's a viewer. That, that in itself, amazing. Um, but then he said, oh, well, I've, I've noticed you've never driven a Pagani on the channel. And I said, well, no, I haven't. Not on the channel, not in real life. You know, would you want to take the Huayra for a spin? His Pagani Huayra, my voice is going. Yeah. And I said, Ooh, I'm going to get a half of the town in a mood. We be going out this in Kalamazoo. Thinking I went platinum the sound of the room. And people going to be tracking me down with the truth. Now, I don't know if you know, but this is the key for a Huayra. I mean, everything about this car is theatre. By the way, we are driving, well, I'm about to drive, <laughs> uh, the Pagani Huayra Nortilo. Um, so, ba -bong, that is the key right there. Uh, the little front of the car goes down onto its little holder. Just, there you go, wedge him in. This goes into there. Everything comes alive. Foot on the brake and... <laughs> I really, I don't even know where to begin with this entire experience. I'm so unprepared. Uh, okay, so handbrake is off. Uh, pull down. We are now supposedly in gear. Um, and uh, am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just give it some. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you have to give it quite a bit of throttle to pull away because uh, the sort of uh, first negative that I'm going to mention about the Huayra, I can't believe I'm saying negatives, is that it's a single clutch 
gearbox, automatic gearbox. So it's a bit slow. Will I fit through there? I know I'm going to wait <laughs> because you can see not only is this car exceptionally wide, but these wing mirrors are just, they just stick out for miles. Um, some history, some background about the Huara and about Pagani for those of you who might not know what this car is or anything about it. Um, Pagani, an independent sort of super wild hypercar manufacturer um, uh, created by Horatio Pagani. Um, they started off with the Zonda or the C12, which is sort of a real poster car, naturally aspirated V12. This is not the replacement. This is a sort of completely separate model, which was more of a hyper GT, uh, twin turbo, big beast, uh, Mercedes power, and yeah, maybe I'll try and go around there. Uh, reverse gear in a Huara. Um, you really have to get used to, yeah, getting driving a single clutch in a hypercar again because most of these cars like the Lafra and the 918 are so easy to drive but you do have to really think in this one right here we go pulling out onto a road in a Huayra <laughs> excuse me now visibility is actually pretty good I was expecting it to be horrific okay there we go gears <laughs> this is such a bizarre experience it's quite a unique place to sit it's it's louder than I thought for sure um, Oh, where are the indicators? That's an interesting one. Uh, thumb? Uh, there, there we go on the steering wheel. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a journey of discovery, people. I have to say, at these speeds, once you remember that it's a single clutch gearbox, it's, it's relatively easy. As I mentioned before, the point of the Huayra is a GT car and oh it's getting loud and it's getting quick and there was the kick from the gearbox <laughs> oh my god it's still I mean it don't you do not forget that you are in a hypercar at any point in time so the whole thing with Pagani is that these cars are all relatively bespoke if you're buying a Zonda or Huayra you're spending enough money that you want to you know have a bit of customization so the one that we're in at the moment as i mentioned the nortilo actually looked a little different when it left the factory um it's now had the tempesta upgrade package and a bespoke one of one roof scoop which oh my god <laughs> i'm using about 25 percent throttle there and as I say, the noise is all starting to build up. It is a noisy cabin. The ride is actually smooth. That is one thing I was expecting it to be a lot bumpier. Having experienced my first ever Zonda in Hong Kong, the 760, um, that was really, really harsh. This is definitely a lot softer. I don't think we're in the harshest setting anywhere. I think we're just in sort of basic <laughs> driving mode. Um, but yeah, it's, oh my God, I'm driving a Huayra, people. Right, come on, I'm trying to think of more things that I can tell you. Um, all of the sort of dials and air conditioning units all seem to work. That's not interesting, is it? Oh my God, it's just such a bizarre moment in life. But yes, the, the turbo noise, if you think of the Zonda, so if you don't know about Zonda, the Zonda is all about screaming V12. It's a singing the opera. This is a lot more whooshy whooshy and bassy bassy. Uh, that's my technical analysis. Uh, Chris Harris, watch out. <laughs> oh, the owner's laughing. The owner is in the car next to me um, and he's just laughing because he realizes that I'm just a complete plonker and I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's quite hard to remember anything in life when you drum behind the wheel of a Pagani for the very first time. Okay, look, underpass. So, window slightly cracked. Oh my God, the noise is so bizarre. I'm gonna crack the other one slightly as well. <laughs> I have no idea if you picked up on the big, deep aggro rumble that was, you could just hear it. Try 
surprise of the year? I think this might top the LaFerrari experience. Sorry if it's a bit noisy, I'm literally stood by the main road that runs alongside the Clausen dealership, but yes, okay, fine. The LaFerrari experience was an awesome surprise, but this was so unexpected. Firstly, I didn't even think, I, didn't, I had no idea this car was gonna be here. And then to not only go in it, but drive it, that's my first ever Pagani experience. Now, I have to say, I feel like with the Huayra, it's a piece of art. And speaking to the owner off camera, that's what it's all about. Even sitting in it, you still get this kind of beauty. You just, you're sat in beauty, you see beauty. It's not necessarily about the driving experience because the gearbox is a bit clunky and the noise inside is, but it somehow doesn't matter because right now as the sun is setting and you're looking at it, it just, makes sense and if you have the kind of money to be able to buy a car like this and you can personalize it and customize it to your taste why wouldn't you so anyway, massive massive thanks to the owner of this car for that surprise i'm gonna head back inside to klaus and continue my filming there and chatting with them because that's why i was supposed to be here i think they've got some kind of rc crazy rc car they want to show me but yes i gotta take a few more photos of this thing look at it okay when they said rc car i was not expecting this Oh my God. So apparently this is basically sort of the mechanics side project when they're not working away on the incredible cars back here, they're playing with this thing. It's got a two stroke 90 CC engine on it. I mean, it must weigh about a kilo. I am so glad that I stopped by Klaus. And I mean, obviously the Pagani experience aside, it's just an amazing setup. I've visited a few places over the last few days in Geneva and this just feels different. It's got a real, I mean, firstly, the fact they do pretty much every area of business, not only buying and selling of cars, but the service and restoration, but also the storage. They tick every box, but they're doing it in a sort of really bespoke hands-on way. It just feels, sorry, I don't know if I'm disturbing you. No, okay. Um, it just feels, like a real personalized service. And when you see the lineup of cars that they have on the showroom floor, I think you know that they're not messing around. So anyway, yes, absolutely amazing. I better get out of here because I think they're locking up and packing up. As you can see, they're trying to finish up for the day and I'm keeping them all a little bit too late. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. Well, don't trust what you heard from the bubble, dog. I've been busting out features on a double tree shuttle. Well, the FaceTimes asked me how brothers brother stay so humble. Well, I just said to ask the driver for some help with the buckle. But anyway, backtrack, I've been doing concerts in the mirror. And I got family only get the updates.